Hello and welcome to the latest video by Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy. My name is Sean Lacey and in this video I'm going to work through two types of incremental area under the curve calculations. The calculations that I'm going to work through are very much based on Bruns et al's paper in 2005 glycemic index methodology. In Bruns et al's paper five different area under the curve calculations are shown. The first be labeled here, A, is the total area under the curve, which is trapezoidal's rule. B is looking at incremental area under the curve up to a cut point, where that cut point is where the measurement goes below baseline. C looks at the positive incremental area under the curve, so it looks at the area above the baseline measurement, that's what's calculated. D looks at the in incremental area under the curve above the minimum, so everything above the whatever the minimum measurement is, is calculated in the area. And E looks at the net incremental area under the curve, which look the calculation involves the positive area less the negative area, and the divider between positive and negative is that baseline measurement. Now, in a previous video that I uploaded uh, onto YouTube, I looked at three of the calculations. I looked at A, C and E from the previous graphic, so A being the total area under the curve, which is trapezoidal's rule, C being the positive incremental area under the curve, and then E being the uh, net incremental area under the curve, so the positive less than negative. And I felt for completeness what I would look at doing in this video is I would just look at the other two area under the curve calculations from Bruns et al's paper, which is looking at the incremental area under the curve to up to a cut point where the cut point is once you go below uh, the baseline measurement and I look at the incremental area under the curve above the minimum point as well. Um, I'm going to just I suppose I'm going to look at just kind of taking a sample measurements uh, and I'm going to just demonstrate the two. So the first one uh, is and is basically just going to look at everything above a baseline measurement. So the baseline measurement in this case is 15 units. So there's no context to this the time. It did make sense to just use time as the actual, I suppose, the x-axis for the horizontal axis for um, to work out the area. But um, there is no, there, the, the, these me numbers here are just kind of sample measurements. So the, the first one I'm going to look at will be just looking at the incremental area under the curve up to that cut point. So I'm going to take the script I would have shown before in the previous video, which is with the link in down below here of the uh, positive incremental area under the curve. So the script I would have got online, and I'll just pop that up here. I would have got this script online, and I would have referenced this in the previous video as well. There was just one typo in it, the, and I would have I remarked this before that this division by two isn't needed, uh, and would have been rectified in the script that I would have used. So, but I'm just going to take the script, which is the positive incremental area under the curve. I'm just going to look at here's the sample measurements. So there's various time points up to kind of two hours, and these are the measurements that I'm using. Uh, and I'm going to just use that script that's on that link here and I'm going to run this off here and I'm going to get back now this is not the one that we want to demonstrate yet here but what this is doing here is it's looking at the area under the curve for each of the sectors so for each of the uh, blocks that we have and you can see here if I come to the curve here that I have here in the PDF the area it, so that we've kind of an increasing slope it decreases drops down to, down to here and then everything beyond that shouldn't be calculated. Now, when you look at the script that's up online, what the script up online does is it works out the positive incremental area under the curve, which basically means it takes these four areas here and adds on the last one here as well. Okay, so that's just the script that I have. So I'm just using that script. Uh, I don't want this part here to be uh, included, so this last area. So what I'm going to do to use the script is I'm going to come up to this script into the fourth sector, which is, and again, I suppose in my previous video, I would have uh, kind of spoken through the logic to the script here. So I'm, I won't do that in this one. If you want kind of a bit more information on the logic to what's happening in each uh, part, of, I suppose, the for loop and essentially the if else that go back to the previous video. Uh, but here, it's quite simply, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to break it. OK, so when you come to this point here that if it essentially what this is looking at is if the area goes negative or if it goes below the the baseline measurement that the area should not be calculated any further okay so i'm just typing in a break there that's all i'll highlight this here again i'll just actually that, that they're all common so i don't need that so i'll just i need to run the function because the function has been updated so i'm going to run the function first here and then if i come down here now i'm going to look at running uh determining uh, using the function so the incremental area under the curve stating the time points, stating my measurements, 
and then I should want to see what the area will actually turn out to be. And if I look this out here, you can see that the area that we're getting back then is 675. What it's doing is it's working out the area for the first four sectors until the measurement goes below baseline and then it's breaking it and it's not working out anymore, which is essentially what the incremental area under the curve cut actually does. Okay, so that's kind of a nice one. I suppose why I wanted to work through this is it's just a slight tweak on the script that is already up online. Okay, the last one uh, that I just want to look at is going to be the incremental area under the curve above the minimum measurement. Now, this is actually a relatively straightforward one to work on here because it's essentially looking at taking, it's very similar to trapezoidal's rule, except with trapezoidal's rule, what it will do, trapezoidal's rule will take everything above the horizontal axis. So really all we need to do is we could actually use trapezoidal's rule, but then just say to start it at five, as opposed to starting it at the origin. That's all I'm actually gonna do in this case here. And the area that we're gonna get back, you can actually just check it out. And I'd always recommend to people look that if they're using kind of the script for the first time, especially doing these calculations, some calculation like this, just to kind of maybe do it using pen and paper first, just to show that you actually can get the same results as the script that's been demonstrated here. Just to, I suppose it kind of aligns that your own understanding of the script or the, the, what the script is doing, it aligns with your own an understanding of what it should be doing, okay? So here, I'm going to the other script that I would have shown in the previous video again, which is gonna be trapezoidal's rules. This is trapezoidal's rules script. Now, this isn't the answer that we want yet. This is all, of, uh, so this again is the same data set I'm gonna use or the same sample data set. I'm using the cat tools package and using trap Z function here. And this will give me the total area under the curve, okay? Which in this case here turns out to be uh, 2,325, I think it is, okay? So the what I'm gonna do here is what when we look at the trap Z function, the first part is kind of your X axis, so it's the time component. And then the second part is your Y axis. So what I'm gonna do here for the Y axis is I'm gonna say subtract the AUC, the minimum of the AUC dollar sign V. So it's basically, if I just look at this, that's just going to take away the minimum point here, which should be five in this case, actually. Did I do a bracket wrong in that? Sorry, look, the capital V there. Apologies for that. Put Fix that up here like this. And you, you can see that we get back. So basically what this is doing is it's going to take away that five from everything. And if we work that out here for this, you can see now that we're actually getting the answer that we're looking for, which is 1,725, which is what I've demonstrated over here as well. Okay, so it's a nice, easy one, uh, one to do. And it's basically... I suppose just a slight tweak, a tweak on trapezoidal's rule. So instead of trapezoidal's rule starting off on the horizontal axis, you're telling it essentially to start off at the minimum point by looking at minus the minimum, whatever that minimum point is. And that's it for the, uh, this video. Um, I just felt it would be just a nice add-on to the previous video that I've uploaded before where I looked at the tree area under the curve calculations. And I suppose just to kind of complete the five calculations that Bruins et al's paper showed. Um, and just to see, look, that it's just a little tweak on the previous script that I've already shared. So um, like always, if you uh, on YouTube, if you like this video, then please like, uh, share. Uh, if you subscribe to the, to the YouTube channel, you'll get the uh, updates or I suppose get notifications when the latest videos are going to be uploaded and so on like that. And if, if you have ideas for future videos or future uh, things that you might find will be helpful, uh, then feel free to reach out to me on any of these handles here. For the moment, all the best.